Not much is known about Cuba with its independent struggle spearheaded by the late Fidel Castro and its communist approach that is enshrined even in the constitution, the most pronounced feature. But the Latin American country, an island between the Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico, has one of the best healthcare systems, fully run by the government, effectively locking out private practice and the operations of private clinics. But why the success, one may ask. The system is designed with a hierarchical division, at the top being the Minister for Health and the lowest being the Family Doctors Division. The unique nature of a system is exemplified by the Polyclinicals Division, which is the equivalent of a hospital providing services to people in an electoral ward in Kenya. <laughs> During our visit to Cuba, we accompanied Health Cabinet Secretary Cecily Kariuki on a tour of the Vedado Polyclinic in the outskirts of Havana, Cuba's capital. It's a walk-in center whose sole mandate is to provide curative care, but with a bigger emphasis on promotion, prevention and rehabilitation. The polyclinics offer services such as mother and child programs, control of communicable and non-communicable diseases, genetic services, x-ray and minor surgeries. But it has the capacity to investigate medical emergencies such as a breakout and fully contain it while proposing medical solutions for the same. Cholera outbreaks in Kenya continue to be a headache to medics resulting into fatalities. And while cancer treatment is free in Cuba, the polyclinics have developed a cancer vaccine meant to rid the country of cancer completely. Well aware of the dangers that could predispose one to cancer, the Cuban government has made it mandatory for its citizens to visit a polyclinic once a month for a fully paid up checkup. But as part of creating awareness and advocacy, the Cuban government through the polyclinics is insistent on physical fitness, which does not exempt the old. Road pavements are reserved for physical exercises, as well as some of the parks being dedicated to physical exercises to citizens as old as 90 years. In Kenya, for example, referral hospitals such as Kenyatta and Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital have to deal with the influx of walk-in patients who do not have referral letters, training capacity and delivery of services. But the influx can perhaps be explained by the lack of capacity and specialists in level 4 hospitals. Cuba, on the other hand, pumps 27% of their budget to healthcare with an emphasis on capacity building at the polyclinics. So popular are the polyclinics and Cuba's healthcare system that 11% of their GDP is from medical tourism. The polyclinics are a training ground for medical professionals who earn degrees and postgraduate degrees from training other polyclinicals. <laughs> Doctors in Kenya spent the better part of 2017 on strike, demanding for a higher pay and the improvement of working conditions. In Cuba, a doctor earns $24 a month, the equivalent of 2,400 Kenya shillings, but with all other services including housing and education for family fully catered for by government. A Kenyan doctor at the entry level, at least from the CBA signed last year, earns a maximum of 81,000 exclusive of allowances. It is not as complicated as perhaps it is made to look. It is something that is simple if we apply our effort uh, to it and if there is a political will which is already um, exhibited uh, by the president but also the leaders, the political leaders in Kenya. We have just seen basic equipment, not any complicated machinery and um, a dedicated workforce. It is the work ethic. It is uh, the doctors to look at uh, their work as a calling more than a business. Medication is free in the polyclinics and is also subsidized by government in the event you will buy it from a pharmacy. Meet Dr. Rodriguez Lau. 
The family doctor in Vedado, her work from morning to 1 p.m. involves seeing patients coming for medical checkups. But from 1 to 5 p.m., her routine changes to making medical visits to families in Vedado. She tells us that residents in Vedado are placed under medical classifications, which include healthy appearance, risk groups, chronic non-communicable diseases, and chronic communicable diseases. The classification informs the doctor's planning of visits to patients. Among our functions here is uh, prevention with the patients. We also do uh, health care or, or curation, rehabilitation, and we also do education and research. The doctor is housed with the community for the sole purpose of accessibility in the event of medical emergencies. But before the scheduled visit by the doctor to your family, one is allowed to visit the doctor for a checkup. 65-year-olds and above must have a regular visit to the doctor for checkups to pick out any diseases or likely old age health complications. Men and women between the age of 24 to 64 must also do regular checkups for prostate and cervical cancers. There is every conviction that we need to reorient our approach um, and to give more focus to prevent promotive uh, preventive uh, as opposed to curative approach, uh, which is currently how our health sector is oriented. Contracts for the 100 specialist doctors coming to Kenya end of June were signed last week by CSC Silikariuki, as well as a cooperation agreement between Kenya and Cuba, signed by CS Karaoke and her Cuban counterpart Roberto Morales Ojeda. Between Kenya and Cuba Kenya and, and Cuba. 100 doctors coming to Kenya, it's all systems go. It's an exciting day and I want to appreciate my colleague Dr. Ojeda for signing on to release the doctors to now come to Kenya and to, for opening the door for me to bring 50 Kenyan doctors to train here in Cuba. Deal done. Y el internacionalismo. Uh, this convention um, and the presence of, uh, number, of, of a numerous delegation from Kenya uh, uh, will, help, will help us strengthen our healthcare, healthcare system sorry, and also to uh, strengthen the healthcare system from Kenya. From Kenya. Uh, this is based on the principle of solidarity, which was a principle that was always defended by our commander in chief, our general commander in chief, Fidel Castro, the builder of our healthcare system. And when he spoke of Africa, he would always say that in cooperating with Africa, we are only we are doing nothing but paying a debt that we have with uh, humankind. Amongst the doctors coming to Kenya are nine specialists dealing with critical care nine orthopedic surgeons, five plastic surgeons, five nephrologists, five urologists, three neurosurgeons, 47 family physicians to be deployed to each county, four radiologists, six general surgeons, two oncologists, two dermatologists, and three general cardiologists, all from the Medical Education Corporation with Cuba. Homabi County does not have a single gynecologist, while the entire Rift Valley region has not a single neurosurgeon. The Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union are opposed to the specialist doctors coming to Kenya, arguing that there are unemployed medics in Kenya. The national government and the Council of Governors united in their resolve to bring in the doctors while insisting that their engagement in Kenya that will last for two years will in no way mean that the government stops employing Kenyan medics. We do not have sufficient specialized doctors across the country, but even where we have a skill set that is required to go to the far-flung areas, we also have cases of um, uh, health, human resource being asked to serve in the far-flung areas but not willingly going to serve in, in those places. And so the specialized doctors who we are bringing today is really a drop of the, in the ocean of what we may require. But as a starting point, we'll invest in it, but we'll invest in it with the aim of using them to train and capacity build and also mentor our own uh, doctors. I want this to be taken uh, in a very, very sober way because Cuban doctors are not coming to replace Kenyan doctors. We will always need Kenyan doctors. We will continue training the Kenyan doctors. We will continue strengthening our local capacity. We are not going to replace anybody. But uh, we have to also accept our situation, number one, of the national 
doctor patient ratio we have also to appreciate the fact that certain counties lack specialties these are not ordinary doctors these are specialists we don't have them and they are going to our level four and uh, six hospitals in fact Kenya is the only country within East Africa that has yet to sign a deal for medical cooperation with Cuba. Cuban doctors are spread out across 37 Latin American countries, 33 African countries, and in 24 Asian countries that include economic powerhouse Japan. We visited the medical cooperation center to meet some of the doctors who have undergone the rigorous process of interviews and vetting by the Kenya Medical Board. A process activated immediately after President Uhuru Kenyatta's state visit to Cuba mid-March. I am very happy. The possibility to go to practice medicine, to do all the medicine for the people. It's a one condition for the, all the doctors in Cuba, all the medicine. It's a, the history. It, it is my formation. Okay. I think that um, in Kenya is a, very, a great opportunity to give uh, to now the people. Um, because I know the of Kenya is a beautiful country. With Cuba having successfully kicked out malaria in 1960, CS Karaoke signed another cooperation deal on the control of malaria vectors as Kenya seeks to up the war on malaria. Kenya's healthcare problems can only be described as having been compounded by two issues. One, human resource problems as well as attitude. Otherwise, with so little, Cuba has been able to maximize on its resources to ensure that its citizens are able to reap from affordable health care in this country. How about Kenya? John Jacob Curia, Channel One News.